Getting perfect white balance in a photograph is not always as easy as just using the color dropper tool in Lightroom and clicking on a known gray or a known white source in the photograph because we often have more than one color of light in a photograph. For instance, in this photograph that we're looking at now, we actually have a window light source to the right, we have an incandescent light source in the background, and we have a variable LED constant light source that is lighting our model. As a result of that, just clicking on a particular place in this photograph is gonna give us the wrong color balance in almost every instance. In the photograph on the left, I neutralized the white balance to the incandescent light on the background, and that made my foreground color blue. In the photograph in the middle, I color balanced for the model's light source, which made the background light very, very warm. In the photograph on the right, I color balanced for the window light source, which made the the model warm and also the light source in the background became really orange. And this is where we're going to use our Color Checker Passport version 2. Now in the first version there was just a white card and then a little signature pad that told you what date you got the card. But now they've actually utilized both panels um, in the Color Checker Passport with a white and a gray card. Both of these will do the job. The first light source that we want to check is the light source that cannot be changed, and that is the incandescent bulb in the background. Once you have your camera looking at a gray card under a specific light source, like the incandescent bulb in our shot, you should then see a histogram, and the red and the green and the blue will probably be at different places on the histogram, which means that you don't have a neutral light source or your camera is not neutralizing that light source. In order to do that, all you need to do is get the red, the green, and the blue piles of pixels and data on your histogram to match up. You want them all to be in the same place on the histogram. In order to do that, simply dial your white balance on your camera and you could use the basic settings by going to shade, incandescent, etc, etc or you can use the actual Kelvin rating and increase and decrease the Kelvin temperature in order to get those piles to come into alignment. Once those piles are perfectly in alignment so that they are all in the same spot on the histogram, you know that you have an absolutely neutral color balance on that particular light source. We can then match our front light or our model's light to the incandescent bulb. In order to do this, again, we simply fill our camera's frame with that gray card, then look at the piles of information in the red, the green, and the blue on your histogram, and you will find that they are off again. Now, instead of dialing the temperature of the camera white balance, we're going to start dialing the temperature of our variable LED light source. And we're just going to keep warming it up until, again, the red, the green, and the blue piles of data inside of our histogram end up getting into alignment again. Once they're in alignment, then we know that we have a perfect match between our incandescent bulb in the background and our light source for our model in the foreground. And now you can see in the right image that the foreground and the background match in color temperature, which means that if we go into Lightroom or any other program, we can play with our white balance. And as we warm up the shot, we warm the entire shot up and everything warms together. Or I can cool down the shot. Now, I'm not too concerned about that window because window light is generally blue. It looks nice as a blue light source. It's an interesting thing to have. So I'm not going to try and match the blue light source in the window to the rest of the thing. I could do that by just putting a warm gel filter over the window, but I'm okay with that blue light source, so we'll leave it as it is. So the next time you're taking a photograph, don't just pay attention to the quality of your light source. Pay attention to the color of your light source and make sure that the color of your light sources match so that you don't have to spend a lot of time in post-production fixing stuff you could have done in minutes or even seconds at the camera.